Hello, my name is Melissa Ballas, formerly Melissa Burke, however just been married, so Ballas being my new name. My student number is 005-009-3046 and this is an individual submission. I was also asked to let the markers know that the second assignment of EDC 1200 has been extended to the 4th of February. Today I will be discussing an event that occurred this week and continues to be commemorated every year of January 26, Australia Day. This is the most important and most memorable day of the year for many Australians and the thousands involved in becoming new Australian citizens. During this day, many proud Australians roam the cities with displaying their flag, the symbol of our nation. This flag held high by people that walk the streets or are attached by cars on the road clearly identifies these people as proud Australians. The most noteworthy thing though about the appearance of the people was the amount of diverse and multicultural backgrounds which all helped shape Australia's identity as a growing nation. We can all ask ourselves, who are Australians? The common stereotyped answer would be white Anglo-Saxons. However, this depends on our attitudes, opinions and our racist view towards our others. For example, Aboriginals would most probably conclude that they are the original Australians. Others will conclude Australia is made up of a multicultural society. Whatever the answer, it shows the difference it shows the difference in one nation and how we as Australians are all entitled to our own opinions with freedom of speech. Australia Day to many means being proud of our country and the people we stand for. However, the real significance of this day, January twenty sixth, to me as many as well as many others, comes down to 222 years ago, when British Governor Captain Arthur Phillip sailed along with 11 ships holding 750 convicts from Britain's overcrowded prisons, from Portsmouth, Britain to Botany Bay and then to Port Jackson in New South Wales, arriving in 1788. This incredible journey of the first fleet was the start of a settlement for Australia, a new lifestyle for the Aboriginal nomads roaming the land and the beginning of a new nation formed by convicts from all parts of England, from all classes, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. These convicts were sentenced from 7 to 14 years uh, as slaves and labourers, producing crops and farming for the land. When convicts completed their sentence with good behaviour, they were free to settle here in Australia or return to Britain. Many settling and staying in Australia. From this day onwards, Australia has continued to grow in number with a wide range of diversity. With thousands of immigrants entering the country each year, adding to our trading industry and, crea and creating more wealth for the economy. Australia, although its first arrivals began as lower class citizens trying to make a living for themselves, they have now become uh, one of the wealthiest countries in the world due to the many diverse skills and trademarks. Due to this event being of high importance to Australia now and for many years to come, I therefore will use this event focusing on the topic of the first fleet as the basis of my of the teaching a year three educational curriculum. The key learning areas of this curriculum will generally focus on studies of society and the environment. According to the Queensland Department of Education, the curriculum suggests for each year three students relating to studies of society and the environment cover a range of learning outcomes teaching sh teachers should cover for children and shows what students should be capable of by the end of year three. Some examples include the following in the ways of working. These are that students are able to pose questions for investigations, plan simple investigations based on questions, identify and collect information and give evidence from narratives and familiar sources, make judgments about the usefulness of the information and evidence, draw conclusions and give explanations using information and evidence. I feel as an educator it is important for children to come to learn their identity to see where they originate from and how they belong to a multicultural society. I will hope to achieve this through a variety of learning teaching methods. 
One important would be to simply one idea would be to allow the children to watch a film relating to the first fleet and the arrival of the convicts. Here the children can draw up conclusions and form opinions about Australia's history and the origin of its culture and land ownership. One way of drawing their feelings out is through the stories and films of how Aboriginals and convicts were treated during the white settlement. This experience will help students to see the difference and see the importance of treating difference equally and respectively. Another interesting experience would be for the children to have a dress up day, allow them to dress up as they wish a convict in the first fleet, an Aboriginal perhaps, or a traditional costume of where their family background originated. Students can see these dress, different dress and discuss one another's dress, giving their prior knowledge or their extended knowledge of the different cultures and traditions, perhaps even reenacting how each one of them were treated. This is an event in which can open the way for many different learning experiences, not only in studies of society and culture, but also in other areas such as mathematics, naming states, finding places on the map, marking out journeys. It can also be taught through English language and literacy, such as writing recounts, reading and viewing different texts, and discussing these and forming ideas and conclusions. With many hands-on activities and students working together in teams, Students can learn to value each other's opinions, see the benefits of using one another's different ideas to form conclusions. This event will not only help children learn their identity and identities of others, but also broaden their knowledge of Australia's history and identity, and will help the children to accept one another as individuals from all different backgrounds, cultures, different races, and as well as different classes. Today, we still can be classified into different groups, determined from our race or class. Although it is important that children learn to view others as equal citizens, each with the opportunity of fulfilling their goals and dreams. I'm Melissa Ballas. Thank you for listening.